Thank you. Uh, thank you for a nice introduction. Um, once again, it's nice to be here talking different uh, topic, but actually somewhat similar in a way that trying to uh, look at something new, uh, looking at regional anesthesia and needle technology. But probably you can appreciate that a lot of stuff already talked about, like echogenic, and also we just hear to excellent talk about 3D, 4D, to how to optimize the uh, image. So we'll be trying to, to see how, well, I'm trying to just put in, I'm a simple-minded person, so we'll try to look at what technology now we can use to enhance our uh, research and what is the possibility in future and uh, to see in um, year future may be helpful. Same thing, uh, disclosure, uh, working with Pak Yang and also published book with uh, Springer. Now, what's new? When I look at this topic, first thing come to my mind is I like to watch TV when I'm young in a way that one of the uh, favorite TV series, the uh, late 60s series, is uh, Star Trek because they always say they want to be a new frontier. Now, looking at this uh, film, I think it actually gives you a lot of ideas sometimes. Uh, I think possibly uh, Steve Jobs also get the idea about the, your, our smartphone, our iPad, our GPS system. Because this, remember that what he's trying to do, talk to this uh, Star Trek enterprise, ask them to beam them because this will provide signal about GPS. Just like our ultrasound machine out there that we're looking at. So maybe if the re resident come to you and say, I, I'm looking for a research idea, maybe ask him to watch one episode then they will give you some idea. I think one thing is sometimes imagination is important. You can see this is late 60 TV series. Now 50 years later, some of the imagination just become reality. So as I say, I will try to get the presentation, try to avoid and I cut out anything already discussed to a minimum so that we'll have a little bit fresh look with, uh, within the 20 minutes. Okay, look at different character design in a way that um, how the needle technology may help line up everything. Now, we know that we have a hygienic needle. Doesn't matter how they do it, they put different refractor, how they cut it, the, the idea is just to reflect the ultrasound beam to the, uh, uh, the beam back to the uh, trans transducer. And now, uh, we already talked about the machine, some machine can steering, compounding, whatever. They basically use multi-different ultrasound beam to give, give you a better signal to catch it. So we know the picture we're going to get better. One thing that seems to be, I actually a few years ago look at this, I thought that may be interesting. What this is, uh, you actually go right being a needle. Remember that a lot of uh, faculty may told you that, oh, if you cannot see a needle, trickle your needle. The same idea, but instead of the machine uh, triggering the uh, needle so that it can vibrate, if you put on Doppler, you can see it. But this article is about 2007, and nothing seems to be on the market. Sometimes it's a long time to get it, and now with the GPS system, maybe some company may not be interested to invest more. The GPS system concept is quite simple. Remember that when we are in neurosurgery, uh, uh, when the neurosurgery, they are already using that to matching the CT scan. Same concept, it's a magnetic field, and I think the technology is still working on it because they have to get the signal receiver and transduce. transducer, you can be uh, bigger, but the, uh, the, the trans sending off signal from the needle tip, you need a certain size, so they're still working on the size, but I think eventually they get there. But one caution I have to tell you that sometimes when you make it too easy that you can get A to B, then you may miss that something in between and then you may transact in between then because people may be slack off about their anatomy and know their whole profile. So just have to uh, work of caution on that. This technology is not new. Actually, when I look at, into this, I have this concept about seven or eight years ago when I first started because I have trouble getting my uh, needle. Actually, they already patented it for a long time. Just that uh, the ultrasound company don't want to make it because probably they want you to buy a new machine every year instead of give you a toys that you can actually put needle from A to B easily. But technology is there. But I think at the end, just like everything, probably will become like almost TV game that we look at a screen, mobilize the hand. Um, so the hand-eye coordination, no matter what technology you take us, will be closer and closer in this scenario. This picture, actually, I take it uh, when I'm writing a book. This is my two sons. Actually, 
maybe I give them a PM uh, um, training already in terms of like, how to handle coordinates. Actually, it's true that when I see rest, uh, first thing is sometimes I ask, do you pay read video game? The people who pay video game, they do do better because they know how to look at the screen and know their hand what they're doing instead of keep looking down, looking upward. But I think that will be the future. So without those fancy toys, how are we going to do it? One of the common questions is, people say, when I was playing so hard to do, they, all of the plays, they cannot get it. For some of people who workshop with me, I already briefly explained to you before. Well, one question is, when we see a dot, for example, in this case, in the two centimeter range, you see a dot, can we know that it's a shaft or needle tip? How many people think that we can, this is a, you know it's a shaft or needle tip? Don't know? Okay. The answer is yes, because the information is all there. You look at the ultrasound, you know it's two centimeter. Only thing you have to know is um, look at the, uh, um, the needle, how was the marking? And then based on mathematical uh, calculation in a way that you don't have to do any calculation because if you put the needle close enough when the depth is long enough, the deviation just like you do for us epidural, that one centimeter uh, lateral or, or compensate your angle becomes smaller inference and more inference. In other words, if your dot is about two centimeter and your needle uh, mark is or two centimeter, likelihood you're going to just looking at roughly the needle tip. Okay, so same question. So for example, if the ultrasound is only two centimeters on the screen, but your marking in here is four centimeters, it's no doubt you have to be, you're looking at the shaft. There's only physics there. In other words, if your, let's say your dot is four centimeters and your marking is four centimeters, you know you're looking at the uh, needle tip. So that's quite important. Sometimes you just get the pro close together, parallel with your pro, you can get to your target quicker. It's almost like that you don't need a GPS system. So sometimes I actually look at that in a way that sometimes you look around the old thing, actually it's all the information is there. Uh, the ultrasound will give you the depth and your needle marking will tell you how much you already insert. Um, if everything fell, you always can go back to your backup plan. For me, uh, this is my uh, backup GA plan when it's not working. Now, we just hear excellent talk before, so I'm not going to talk to 3D, 4D, but just bring your attention that I know some uh, what literature have been talking about. They want to beam some ultrasound uh, at the tip and then try to differentiate different uh, acoustic response to the tissue so they hopefully they can mark it and color grading it. So one day, I think what they're trying to do is one day by doing that, they have a button they you show up all the tissue, maybe have some label, another button, all the nerve will become yellow. Maybe possible. But by then we may have to find a new job because someone else will do that for us. <laughs> now go back to continuum catheter, how we deal with it today. We, we know the common catheter problem is quite interesting when I become resident, all resident switch to so-called the catheter through needle. I find it's quite cumbersome. You're almost like two step, like Seldinian, Technique, they always leak, uh, it fell out. The, particularly now, initially when I'm using ultrasound, when you try to clean off the gel, you clean off your catheter at the same time. Suddenly it's suddenly all out, or you give a bolus, the whole thing come out. So I think one of the problems is fundamentally is physically wrong way to do it because we make the hole bigger than catheter. Of course you're gonna fail out. Because by physics, your hole is bigger, there's no skin holding on it. When you inject, the fluid will travel back to the uh, uh, hole. And you know once your tape is uh, wet, everything out. That's why people are using dermal bond, tunnel, and doing all sorts of things. But they forget, they make the hole back. Of course, you leak. So the key thing to uh, change this problem is try to make it short so we can do it just like single shot is ideal. Reduce the leak, because if you're leaking dislodge, you may as well not doing it. So that uh, the three things has to be come together so that we, we instead of uh, like almost like when you're doing a continuous catheter, you're almost thinking that you're going to have to a major show, you need half hour, an hour to be uh, arrange that. 
So same thing, look around. One day, I, I do pediatric too, so we do intravenous. And someday I look at that. Why don't I wear seldom my intravenous fell out? Where seldom leak? And when I take out the needle, the catheter won't fall out on its own. We sometimes also using ultrasound to do the IV. I don't have the same problem when I doing the uh, 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 continued catheter. So I say, I can use that. Why? Why not using it? Because it's basic, simple. The needle itself is smaller than your catheter. So your catheter is bigger. So when you're pushing into it, your skin holding on it is preventing leaking. So it's completely changing the dynamic. So it won't move anymore. So now you can put this catheter exactly where you want. Now, one people say, oh, in the past we do have that. Why it doesn't work? We have to look at the technology. Before ultrasound, we don't know what's the depth. We don't know how far we have to go in. You cannot pick the right needle to deal with it. Now you know the depth is about four centimeters. You pick up a, a needle of five or six centimeters. Then you know you can only need to fat one or two centimeters. But in the past, you don't know. You keep fretting it. So that's the difference. We have to change. Sometimes we have to go back to the old technique to see with the new technology, it may be uh, really useful. So what uh, actually I did a study, what I did is proven that when you have the calf of the needle, when you try to pull it, you need like four newton, much stronger force to pull out all other uh, traditional calf over calf full needle technique. And also uh, none of the uh, one will leak. But just quickly uh, use demonstrate a little bit loud. Demonstrate this. Now you will see a calf much easier, although this is a pig model. Because you already line up your calf with your needle. When you line up your needle, you already see the whole thing. Right? So and then you can inject, open up space. Okay, and then you can flat the catheter just like how we do IV. Now we're not going to flat 10 centimeters, we're going to flat one or two centimeters because assume if our calf doesn't move, you don't need that much. So now you can see it, you can see it easily because you're already lining up the whole thing. The catheter, you just need a slight tilt, you can see it better. And then you can inject solution, you can see the whole thing again. So you can see you can uh, much easier. But you know, this is just a pig model to demonstrate how, I want to see how much force, by the way, this my son put, put up all the video clip for me, so <laughs> I have to put the credit, otherwise I get in trouble. Um, so this is only the, the initial model. I want to see how much force, can I see it? Now this one actually is the real patient that we did with the, uh, uh, the, the catheter set we're talking about catheter insertion, the entire area is first cleaned. In We're a doing an interscaling catheter in example, from procedure the approach. This example, 13 to 6 megahertz linear transducer is then covered with a sterile sheath. At the level of the C6 transverse process, we identify the anterior and middle scaling muscles. The upper, middle, and lower trunks of the brachial plexus can be seen between these muscles. The skin is now infiltrated with 2% lidocaine using a 22 gauge needle. If done under ultrasound guidance, this will give an indication of the correct trajectory for the blocked needle at the next step. An 18 gauge catheter over needle is then connected to a nerve stimulator and inserted in plane to the linear probe. <coughs> The needle tip is directed either superior to the brachial plexus or between the upper and middle trunks. This will ensure maximal coverage for shoulder surgery. A spread of solution can then be observed by using a test dose of 5% dextrose. A spread of solution is observed here medial to the trunks. The needle can then be removed and catheter tubing is secured tightly to the catheter. So basically almost like a single shot. You just lift the plastic tubing. 
Now I just go on be on what I'm talking about here now. What do we technology we can use in ultrasound? You know I like to play around different things with ultrasound. Of course we have to scan airway, other things, etc. So that uh, uh, do it. So at first I thought it would be quite useful in terms of airway. Particular that recently I saw an article from uh, UK that um, basically it says it's just over uh, failure away really bad for the cricoid, um membrane is, um, entry for it. So I think ultrasound will work, so go to cadaver, scan all the airway. But actually, quite interestingly, even you see it when you push the airway into it, what I learned is quite interesting when you push on it, you cannot feel the tactile. The trachea almost like moving target, it just moves away. So that no wonder we have trouble getting it because one, we don't have experience, we don't have a chance to do it. Second is you don't get that tactile feeling. Remember that when we do uh, a bit do a loss of resistance, take you a while to get those feelings. You won't get that because once you pop full, we'll be into the other side. So same thing using old toy. Our nurse animation actually can tell you where, when you enter the space because when you need or insert needle touching the tissue, we know it's a closed circuit. But when that pop into airway, it's this connection, almost like turn off the switch. So what that means is basically you have a uh, Insulated needle. Now you're touching needle. This is the fiber optic. You can see the airway, the needle going through. It changes tone. So you know right away. So you almost like can fish out the, the airway. I think that can be potentially quite useful. Now, even you're touching at the back, you know it changed tone again. Okay, so actually it's almost like give you a flashback when you get into the IJ. Okay, so we've done a study with 27 residents. It's 100% success, 100, uh, not 100%, 100% sensitivity, 100 sensitivity. People are going to argue this is full of shit again. Uh, there's no 100%, but this is true. If you don't believe me, you can go home, turn on your light 100 times, and turn it off. Every time will be when you turn on, it's on, when you off, it's off, because this is simple physics, nothing to interpret. But when you add in the hu uh, human factor, we only can increase the resident from success rate from 22 to 81 because uh, people cannot inter interpret the tone change or simple things just like my wife always asks me to take out the garbage. Sometimes I hear it, but I don't do it. So same thing. <laughs> so a final thing is, I think as a regional anesthesia, this is another final shot here. Another technology I think will be there you probably have some kind of scan, but this time they don't need any gel in between. So it's made a way a, a once than us, the ultrasound, right? They don't need gel, even better. So I think eventually we should be a sound anesthesiologist. With ultrasound, will be ultrasound anesthesiologist. And, but at, at this day, we still like infancy in a way that we have to learn. But I think this will prepare next day for technology. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>